so what is the point of learning about typology? That's a very good question, Megan. Thanks for asking. So basically, I have been researching what does it mean to be an ENFJ for like three years. And I've been looking at every other type. And the most important thing is cognitive functions. But why? Why, why would anyone want to learn about personality type? Some of my friends think that I'm a little too overboard with how much I think about and talk about personality type. Even my uh, dad, who's a certified practitioner, thinks that I'm a little bit too into it. But here's the deal. It's a very, very helpful tool, but you have to realize it's a tool. <laughs> it doesn't define you. And a lot of people just use it for the wrong reasons. Now, I want to tell you, how do you use this tool of typology in the best way possible? So, at first when I would read the descriptions of ENFJ, I just really, I felt validated. I felt validated that there was other people like me. That is one, one tool. But once you realize there are other people like you, that's only one half of the puzzle. Like, I, I, you can learn all you want about what your type is and how it normally acts. Because you realize that these, these functions, cognitive functions, it is a preference. It's an order. It's not predestined action. It's um, internal preferences. So there are... There comes a point when you're learning about this where you realize, wait, I'm not like every ENFJ. Like, I, I, I read about this, and even, like, other ENFJs that I see on forums, I, I, I kind of think to myself, like, wait, like, I'm not a pushover. But wait, I, if anything, like, if anything, I don't know how to be comfortable. I... What am I trying to say? Like, I, I'm not afraid of conflict at all. If anything, I create conflict too much whenever I notice there's a problem. I start to realize, wait a minute, I'm not like every ENFJ. What am I like? I had a realization, like, a couple weeks ago about how I was as a child. I'm not naturally, like loving. I am, but it's easy to put yourself in this sort of box of what your personality type is. And like, I think that ENFJs have a problem where we just think that we're the best. We just think, well, I love you more, so more than you could ever love me. And it's because I'm an ENFJ and nobody else will ever love me the same. And like, every type has the capacity to do, be anyone, anyone they want to be. But since certain people have different preferences, my preference is to be the best ENFJ I could be. Like an INTJ, they don't prefer to be like me because they're a different person. But they still could be just as loving and charming as an ENFJ. But they, each person wants to be the best person that they could be and doesn't want to be stuck in this box of what you think you can be. Now there's this idea of a box that you could put yourself into. For me, it was kind of where I started to notice how different I was from a lot of ENFJs. And I needed to realize that, yes, this was helpful for my self-discovery, but there's more to go. I need to know what is different about me compared to this description. And uh, some people, I think, they need to, they, they see this description that says they're so like loving and giving, and they attach to that without actually being it yet. So there's a lot of different things that you could do, but I think that the main thing that you should do when you're learning about this stuff 
is to realize that you're a human. Everyone's different. This is an example. This is a tool that you can use to look at yourself and look at what this is saying about you and realize what is true, what's not true. Exactly. But, like, once you know what a typical ENFJ looks like, that can still help you a lot because I can realize, like, wait a minute, my room is such a mess, like, I never make to-do lists, I am really bad with managing money, like, I can realize these things that make me feel like I'm acting like a pee, and I can take that as a warning sign. It's not, like, or if I, if I find myself not having any love to give, I can take that as a warning sign. This isn't a, um, oh no, I'm just different, or maybe I'm a, maybe I'm an I slash E. Like, people like to do that, where they just tell themselves that maybe they are a combination. Maybe their type is changing, but your type never changes. You're the same person that you will be forever. So, um, these are, once you know your type, you can ask yourself, what am I doing that is healthy? What am I doing that's not healthy? Like, my friend who's an ENFP, she doesn't feel her FI much anymore. That's a warning sign. That's not a sign that she's turning into a thinker or maybe she's actually a thinker. That's a warning sign. You need to know yourself enough to know these warning signs. So, I think that the best tool to use that has just helped me is knowing the functions. Because I'm able to know the difference, know how I use all eight of the functions, and I'll make more videos about that later. But it's really helpful because I'm like taking a philosophy class and I'm basically realizing how TE and FI users versus FE and TI users have been fighting for years <laughs> and like and it just helps me connect so much like theories that I, I start a lot of theories that I don't finish like for example I think that TE and FI is more conservative while FE and TI is more liberal obviously not every like type and every person is different, but these are just sort of broad themes that I realize that, man, the judging functions, they've been fighting for years, and, and they're all trying to say the same thing, and it's really helpful whenever you understand the functions, you're able to understand how that person is trying to come across to you. Although it has been a, a great tool for self-discovery, it also is really just helpful to take a step back and realize that we're all different and realize how when a, another person is trying to communicate with you what they're trying to say and how everyone tries to communicate things differently. Um, I think that's, that's why personality type is so helpful for me because not only is it giving me all this insight and I'm connecting how I view the world through the lens of these functions, but um, it's just easier. Like, I was in a conflict with an INTP and we're very similar people, but um, the way that we get energy is just so different. And if I would have, and I think that most people they look at other people through the lens where they just assume that they're just like them or that they think like them. So I would look at an INTP's actions and be like, they must hate me because they're ignoring me, which that's not true. If an ENFJ were to go a couple days without talking to you, maybe they actually would hate you. But if an INTP would, they're probably just lazy. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just everyone's behavior is just so fascinating to me. And... I don't know. It really helps you understand where you stand in this sort of worldly view. Um, I think the functions are just the most just functions are awesome. And I can explain that more later, but just make sure that if you're into this stuff that you're into it for the right reasons. Just make sure that you aren't like telling yourself oh, well, my perfect type is an INFP and I won't date anyone else but that. Just make sure that you aren't telling yourself 
that you're destined to be like never understood because you don't know anyone that is the same type of you like people are so people are so different each person each person has something interesting to share each person has their own story each person is much more than their type but I don't know 